hey do you think that sleep is a waste of time do you think sleep is not essential for health then you are wrong sleep is very essential for holistic health sleep deprivation lead to a lot of mental and physical disorder and good sleep promote health hi my name is dr sunil sabre i'm wellness coach international best seller author and pediatric neurologist and today i'm going to discuss about sleep how sleep is very essential for our health what are the diseases caused by sleep deprivation and how you can have a good sleep so welcome in this video if you have a difficulty falling asleep then watch this video till end and i'm going to share you i'm going to share with you a lot of easy to implement tips for good sleep thank you so much and i'm going to share my screen now so let me introduce myself again i did my mbbs from bj medical college pune i did my md in pediatrics from km hospital mumbai currently i am practicing as pediatric neurologist i'm a corporate wellness coach and international best seller author my book o stress give me a break has become international best seller and recently i published a book 17 powerful secrets to manage stress during corona pandemic i'm expert and love to do one to one coaching and help people to achieve holistic health i conduct workshop for various corporation and organization on various health related topic like stress management work life balance mindful meditation and healthy diet i have online digital course on stress management if you want to book my appointment these are my contact details you can email me you can message me on this number and you can visit my website www.drsunilsabre.com so dear friend sleep is an important part of our life we spend about one third of time in sleep okay sleep is essential and very important the way food and water is essential for our health if there is a food and water deprivation it may lead to death similarly if you are sleep deprived for prolonged period of time it may lead to sleep it may lead to death excellent uh, uh, it's excellent stress buster it is essential for health and lack of sleep leads to mental and physical illnesses so how do we fall asleep now whole day our body is working our cells are working they are producing energy and during this process a neurotransmitter known as adenosine is formed and it goes into your blood and through blood it goes into your brain and as the day progresses the level of this adenosine increases and after sunset it its level are very high and it acts on the brain and it induces sleep other mechanism is circadian clock through the melatonin so through adenosine melatonin and this circadian clock we fell asleep now there are two sleep cycles there are two types of sleep these are non rem sleep that is non rapid eye movement sleep and rem sleep that is rapid eye movement sleep and during sleep there is a cycle of non rem rem non rem rem sleep and such a five to six cycle occur during our uh, uh, night sleep now this graph depicts that if you are awake then you go to non rem sleep first <clears throat> stage 1 and stage 2 are say light sleep and stage 3 and stage 4 are deep sleep and again it reverse and then you have a rem sleep again non rem sleep and then you have rem sleep so this 4 to 5 or sometimes 6 like cycle occur during night time sleep and as the sleep progress the duration of this non rem sleep decreases and the duration of rem sleep increases so we'll discuss about this sleep so this non rem sleep is made up of 1 to 4 stages and each stage lasts 5 to 15 minutes stage 1 it's light sleep stage 2 it's again at the border between light and deep sleep and stage 3 and 4 is a deep sleep slow wave sleep or we also called as delta sleep 
and during this non rem sleep the restorative function the digestive function the immune functions are activated okay so this non rem sleep is very essential for restorative functions as one get older one get less amount of this non rem sleep now this rem sleep is also called as rapid eye movement sleep during this sleep there is increase in respiratory rate increase in eye movements increase in brain activity but your muscles are relaxed it usually occur 90 minutes after falling asleep so there is 90 minute of non rem sleep and then you get rem sleep first period of rem sleep usually last for 10 minutes but as the sleep progress its duration increases and and by the end of the sleep you will have almost 1 hour of rem sleep intense dreaming occur during rem sleep but as there is a paralysis of voluntary muscles you are protected from acting out of your dream so rem sleep is a mixture means there is a lot of excitement in a brain your heart rate increase your eye movement eye movements increases but your major muscles are relaxed that's why it's called as paradoxical sleep as well so this is a pet scan so you can see the red is the increase activity of brain it's a metabolically active area of the brain so during awake and during non rem sleep you can see the fever area is of the brain is activated but during this rem sleep it's a lot of brain area is activated okay so what is the ideal time to sleep and how many hours one should sleep so there has been lot of study when our ancestors used to live in the jungle they used to awake till there is a sun and when there is sunset they used to go to sleep and that way our circadian clock has been set so during daytime we are awake during night we are sleep but there is a change in the human development after industrialization because of invention of lot of uh, light bulbs tubes and other electricity during night time there is a light and we are falling asleep late so that's why it is responsible for lot of disease but in research it's found that during the current arena at least you should fall asleep by 10 pm it's an optimal type of uh, time for sleep but consistency is also important even if you are not able to fall asleep at 10 pm if you are falling asleep at 11 pm then you should have a consistency there should be consistency when you fall asleep and when you get up from the sleep and in the research it's found that 7 to 9 hour of uninterrupted sleep is very essential for optimum health because if you sleep less than 9 hour or if you sleep more than say 9 and 1/2 or 10 hours there is a increased chance of physical and mental disorders but for children it's a different for adult 7 to 9 hour of uninterrupted sleep is essential for for children the time is more newborn from 0 to 3 months require 14 to 17 hours while infant from 4 to 11 months require 12 to 15 hours toddlers require 11 to 14 hours preschooler requires 10 to 13 hours school age 9 to 11 hours and teenagers 8 to 10 hours so children require more sleep and now because of social media tv they are falling asleep late and because of early school they are getting up early so they are chronically sleep deprived so that's why there is a lot of behavioral uh, problem in the children's like hyperactivity inattention adhd and all so why sleep is important for health dalai lama has said sleep is the best medicine uh, meditation while thomas decker has said sleep is a golden chain that ties health and our body together so during daytime <clears throat> our cell our body undergoes lot of damage and it is because of wear and tear stress ultraviolet rays and harmful exposure to the pollution but during sleep the body is rejuvenated regenerated regenerated whatever damage occur it is healed during the sleep time second thing lot of chemicals accumulates in the brain which is toxic to the brain during this metabolic process and if we are not get rid of this 
toxic material it will accumulate and lead to a lot of disease for example this beta amyloid is accumulate in the brain but during sleep the lymphatic vessels opens up and this beta amyloid is thrown out uh, thrown out of the brain through this lymphatic drainage so you get rid of uh, this beta amyloid which is implicated in alzheimer disease cell produce protein which is a building block of cell during sleep growth hormone is secreted during sleep which is very essential uh, hormones for a metabolic process digestion occur during sleep melatonin hormones which is anti cancer and anti aging properties secreted in sleep and maximum fat burning occur during sleep if you want to lose fat you have to have uninterrupted 7 to 9 hours of sleep okay so fat burning occur during sleep as well memory consolidation occur if you want to increase your memory your recall your intelligence you already have a good sleep sleep is very critical for waking cognition whatever functions you perform during day time like thinking clearly be vigilant alert having attention this occur because of sound sleep emotions also regulated during sleep so that when you are awake during day time you are emotionally stable you are able to face the irritation the stress of the life and you can have a peaceful coexistence with other people but this important health benefit occurs when you have an interrupted sleep okay but if the sleep is unfra- if sleep is fragmented or even if you have a 7 to 9 hour of sleep during day time this benefit doesn't occur so we have seen that sleep is very essential for restorative functions and fat burning and memory consolidation and emotional uh, regulation but if a person is chronically sleep deprived then this sleep deprivations accumulate over a period of time lead to sleep debt the way the financial debt is can ruin a person's financial life the sleep debt can ruin a person's health in there was one news in the newspaper a few years back there was a death of one ceo of a company he was living very healthy life he used to go to gym used to eat uh, very healthy foods he was non addicted still he died at the age of 40 years with massive heart attack what happened so in research is found that he has a slogan that sleep is a waste of time and he used to sleep for 4 hours so this sleep debt is very bad for our health it can take a toll on your health by having a lot of physical or mental disorder or mortality as well so if people are sleeping less than 6 hour 6 and a half hour consistently over a period of time it leads to various diseases so what are the symptoms of sleep deprivation <clears throat> so if you are sleep deprived there may be daytime sleepiness there may be fogginess change in a mood like crankiness or short temper than usual your ability to deal with stress and this uh, other disruptor of life or uh, other irritation of life threshold reduce so with a slight provocation you get stimulated or you become irritated or aggressive or it may provoke anger there may be difficulty in concentrating and making decision there may be tremor shakiness tense muscle trouble seeing or hearing there's a lot of chronic disorder caused by sleep deprivation like obesity because if you are sleep deprived the hormone called as ghrelin is secreted in large quantity and it is hunger hormone so it end up eating a lot of food and it is found that those who are sleep deprived eat more of carbohydrate more of sugar more of cold drinks more of packaged food more of what we call a junk food because due to irritation they want to calm their brain with this carbohydrate so we tend to eat a lot of things in the research they found that uh, those who are chronically sleep deprived their glucose metabolism decreases so they did a study in a 20 year students they sleep deprived them for one week and they change their glucose metabolism and their glucose metabolism reduced by 40 to 50% so their glucose metabolism was as bad as as bad as 68 year uh, 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 person so 
if you're 20 years your glucose metabolism is as bad as 68 year old if you are sleep deprived for one week okay so this glucose accumulates in the fat and lead to obesity also lead to diabetes okay so second thing if you're sleep deprived your cortisol level increase in your body and cortisol also lead to insulin uh, resistance and this in excess carbohydrate you are eating also lead to insulin resistance and these are the causes of obesity and diabetes cardiovascular disease and hypertension also caused because of sleep deprivation your Im- immune function take hit so you're more prone to develop various chronic disorders those who are sleep deprived have two to three times more chance of developing common cold as compared to the people who have a good sleep and in the research it's found that if you're given a vaccine and if you're sleep deprived the antibody are not produced the way it has it, it has to be produced or it is less as compared to the, pe- uh, the from being the people who has given one a vaccine and who take good sleep if you are sleep deprived deprived your psychological vigilance in, uh, decreases so that your ability to take decision your ability to remain alert decrease and it lead to various vehicle accident in the research is found that one in five accidents are because of sleep deprivation if you are chronically sleep deprived the level of testosterone hormone in the body reduces considerably leading to decrease in libido psychological disorders like anxiety depressions occur in a pep who have sleep deprived there is a premature aging of a skin because the cortisol which is increased during sleep sleep in a persons with sleep deprivations it break down the collagen which maintain the luster of the skin if you are sleep deprived it lead to dementia and forgetful now does uh, sleep deprivation only causes disease no excess sleep also causes diseases okay so i would like to share one story with you once a prince went to gautam buddha and he wanted to become the disciple of gautam buddha but other disciple of gautam buddha told gautam buddha that this prince you should not accept him accept him as your disciple because he is very busy in or in religions he cannot sustain the life of disciple <clears throat> but gautam buddha <clears throat> admit this prince in his ashram but once he entered in the ashram he behave in a other extreme way he stop taking foods for week together when you are walking he is walking barefoot not on a normal road but a, on a road which was laden with thorns so after few months his health become so deteriorated that he was on the verge of dying when gautam buddha come to visit him he was very unhappy seeing the sorry state uh, state of his uh, health so he asked the prince i know when you were prince you used to play the guitar very melodiously tell me if the strings of guitar are two types whether it will produce music the prince said no so gautam buddha asked if the strings are too loose will it produce music he said no then when it will produce music the prince said when the strings are not too tight and not too loose so gautam buddha said this is the same way you have to live the life in the life we always do extreme things if we at one moment you will eat a lot of things another moment you will do fasting okay so this is not good we have to follow some middle path which is same in the case of sleep as well low sleep also causes problem excess sleep also causes problem on a lighter note once a delegate went to visit a mental asylum the doctor were showing them the state of uh, the condition of the hospital and the inmates who are admitted there so they went into room number 1 they f- found that the person there was in a very pity state he was crying he was hugging photograph he was kissing the photograph the delegate asked the doctor why this person become mad the doctor said this person was in love with a na- girl named lucy with whom he couldn't marry and because of that he become mad then they went into room number 2 there the person was in a very angry state he was hitting the photograph which shoes was tearing the photograph 
the delegates asked the doctor why this person become mad the doctor said this person married the same girl named lucy <laughs> okay so less sleep is a problem more sleep is a problem optimum amount of sleep is responsible and helpful for the optimum health so excess sleep also causes lots of problem it leads to cognitive impairment problem uh, with reasoning and speaking daytime drowsiness sluggishness or low energy headache depression low mood then they are also prone for obesity diabetes heart disease so more sleep is also problem so optimum amount of sleep is required now what are the sleep disruptor okay so when our ancestors used to live in a jungle they used to uh, go for hunting or collecting food or fruits or roots they used to come back by evening and they used to go to sleep so there were less work less distraction but today's era there a lot of distraction and that is causing a lot of sleep dep- uh, disruption so if a person has a chronic disorder like asthma or other disease or arthritis painful condition headache body ache uh, chest pain you know, chest uh, uh, pain or spine pain then these people have difficulty falling asleep or if they are taking drugs which has a stimulant effect on the brain then there is a problem falling asleep if there is any stressful event in a uh family or somebody is ill or there is a death of family or if there is a loss in the job or there is a divorce or there is a deadline of job then this leads to stress and lead to sleep dep- uh, disruption caffeine is also a sleep disruptor the half life of caffeine is 8 to 9 hours so it effect lasts longer and caffeine blocks the adenosine receptor and we have seen the adenosine is essential for the sleep so it blocks the adenosine so here it is difficult to fall asleep again mobile and tv we are watching mobile then we are watching lot of social media and we are keeping ourselves awake for long period of time again the working condition has changed there is a night sh- uh, shift there is a erratic shift pattern which lead to sleep deprivation also as far as children is concerned they are also using tv social media mobile and they are remaining awake till late night and they have to get up early in the morning for school because if the school is at 7 o'clock then they have to get up at 6 o'clock okay so again there is a problem in falling asleep and uh, getting adequate sleep so dear friends now it's the important topic if you have a difficulty falling asleep or maintaining sleep then how to fall a sleep early and have a good sound uninterrupted sleep so you should have a good sleep hygiene you have to remember certain points to have a healthy sleep so first foremost is you should have fixed time to, uh, to go to bed and fixed time to wake up the way you you use the alarm to get up in the morning you should use the alarm to tell you the time to fall asleep okay so alarm for falling asleep also there you should fix it second thing you have to have a fixed place to sleep you should use the bed to sleep not so far chair because if you are on chair the body or brain perceive that you are doing some work okay and when you go to bed you should not use mobile or other things and it should be used only for sleep then before going to sleep you have to prepare the atmosphere in a such a way that it is less stimulating okay and it lead to relaxation so avoid reading or seeing thriller tv film or any other enter- entertainment that may stimulate you avoid stimulants like tea coffee at least 6 hours before bedtime avoid heavy exercise in the evening preferably do exercise in the morning avoid afternoon nap so you, if you have to take afternoon nap take it for 15 to 20 minutes and in early part of the day maybe 2 3 o'clock if you take afternoon nap by 5 o'clock 6 o'clock then you will find it difficult to sleep in the night there has to be ritual before sleep means relax before sleep have a relaxing shower take a light walk or do some gentle exercise or maybe listen to some soothing music it will make your mind calm dim the light at home 1 hour to 2 hours before sleep let the atmosphere become sleepy only go to the bed when you are sleepy okay 
don't force yourself sleep if you are sleepy then go to bed how your bed should bedroom should be it should be dark there should not be noise okay the temperature should should be on a cooler side and you should keep the windows open for a fresh air now once you go to bed then you have to pray to the god if good thing has happened then you should express your gratitude toward god if you have done something wrong then ask for the forgiveness if somebody has done wrong then forgive that person okay so gratitude prayer is very important now once you go to bed then you have to just let the sleep happens for that person uh, for that uh, matter you have to just observe your breath at your nostril air coming in air going out air coming in air going out you have to just observe your breath you have to breathe very slowly and if you have any thought in your mind you have to bring back your attention at nostril you have to just stop the chatter if you find that you have some uh, thing in your mind you have to bring back your attention at nostril and this is called as mindful meditation so if you do mindful meditation you will fall asleep early you will have uninterrupted sleep and your sleep become mindful meditation you won't have a bad dream and you will awake in the morning refreshed second thing you can do is a progressive muscle relaxation so you go to bed then you have to contract the muscle for 5 second or relax the muscle for 5 second and keep it for 15 to 20 second and then move to other muscles so you can start from foot then leg then thigh then abdomen chest and hand neck face so contract for 5 second relax for 5 second and then keep in a relaxed state for 15 second and move to other uh, muscle once all the muscles are relaxed just observe your breath and do mindful meditation you will fall asleep quickly okay if you are finding it difficult to asleep then you get up do some physical work do some mental work and when you are asleep then come back and then fall asleep okay don't try to just turn from one side to other side if you are finding it difficult to sleep okay and stop the inner chatter So dear friend in this lecture we have seen that sleep is extremely important for mental and physical health lack of sleep which also called as sleep debt may cause various mental and physical illness so to maintain optimum health one should have 7 to 9 hours of uninterrupted sleep during night for adult and for children the hours are more depending upon the age and if you want to have a, a sound sleep then you should have fixed time fixed place to sleep the bedroom should be cold not too much cold not too much hot then you should avoid the exciting things before sleep like drinking coffee or seeing uh, stimulating uh, uh, tv shows thriller shows horror shows then you have to go to bed and you have to do mindful meditation or progressive muscle relaxation and let the sleep happen so if you follow this principle i'm damn sure that you will have good sound sleep which will promote health you will rem- remain very fresh energetic rejuvenated whole day you will be successful in your life you would have less stress you, are, you would have good relationship with your friends and your fr- spouse and your colleague and you would lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life thank you so much for watching this video if you found it useful like it put your comment or suggestion if you uh, want other people to get help from this video share with your friends and family members and if you want to join my community i have given the link in the description so again this is dr sunil sabre wellness coach international best seller author pediatric neurologist signing off for now have healthy and happy life thank you so much